As we enter an age when we can begin to actually tinker with the actual structure of life, say CRISPR, Cas9, um, do you imagine that we'll be able to gain some insight into these questions in the laboratory? As opposed I think, yes. I mean, I, I would, I, whenever I meet a biochemist, I always ask them, can you imagine an alternative biochemistry? Could yeah. you construct an alternative biochemistry? Right. Or if you can't construct it, at least Im imagine it. Um, does it have to be carbon-based, for example? I think the answer to that is probably yes. Would you agree with that? Or well, I mean, carbon is certainly the natural go-to species if I didn't know anything about life and you gave me a list of criterion that you want to have a very active molecule, you want it to be able to bond with all sorts of other molecules in the environment, <laughs> you want it to be uh, uh, a species that's commonplace, so that it's not a rare species that we deal with. But um, there are other pretty active species too. Well, um, silicon is, is mentioned yeah, right, as, for as an element which, which could, could possibly do the same job. Right. Um, but um, I asked Harry Croto, the famous organic yeah, sure, chemist, yeah. and he, he's confident it'll be... That, that it had to be carbon-based. Uh, yes, yeah, it had to be carbon-based. But that leaves a lot of freedom, nevertheless. I mean, even, even within carbon, with, even within organic chemistry, an enormous freedom to, to divert, devise alternative biochemistries. Right. Now, do you, do you think that there will come a point when we just can create life from scratch in the laboratory? I mean, is that in our future? Yes. Uh, I think so, yes. I mean, well, Craig Venter has already created... Well, sort of. ...replica, I mean, uh, yeah. just sort of re re reproduced the same thing. Um, but, uh, yes, yeah, so... so I mean, do you want to say what Craig has done just to... Uh, well, um, he, he has re recreated um, a particular bacterium from scratch. Um, but it's, it is just, a, just one that already existed. Right. Well, if you can do that then you could theoretically create one that doesn't exist already. Uh, and and um, uh, so, we, and from that I suppose you could e might even go ahead, go on to multicellular right. life. And so, you know, does, does this, I mean, obviously this is an exciting possibility. Does it scare you? It excites me more than it scares me. Um, I, I, I'm just fascinated by it and by the, the, the possibilities. So I'm, uh, I do think we have to exercise a precautionary principle. And how, do you, how, do, how would you imagine doing that? As, do you know Sidney Brenner, a great molecular biologist? Uh, not African? personally, yeah. Keep the lid on your Petri dish well screwed down, he said. <laughs> you know, but any, any you know, uh, you know, criterion and, and restrictions you place in this country or in your country, right? I mean, this is not a worldwide type of... Um, no. So... But there have been attempts. I mean, there was, there was a meeting of molecular biologists at one point to sort of devise a kind of moratorium list of things that you, you mustn't do, and I think it, it held for a while. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I suppose a, a greater, more present worry would be if... Um, the techniques of creating of, of, or, or of varying um, microorganisms were to fall into the wrong hands. I mean, biological warfare yeah. has been experimented on by some of the great powers, and if, that, if the techniques fell into the hands of terrorists, um, it, it, especially if the terrorists, for religious reasons, want to die, and therefore don't care whether they destroy the world. Right. Um, it, it, th I think that's probably more of a worry than, than the kind of thing you were raising of, right. of creating life. Uh, but, the, uh, but the bottom line then um, summary, if, if I'm hearing you correctly, is you would agree presumably with the statement that whatever, 100 years or 500 years from now, people will look back at this era and sort of smile at the mystery that we once thought was embedded in life and it will just be another concoction of chemicals that happens to be able to carry out certain processes and people will shrug as opposed to revere this entity that forms, at least on this planet. I suppose if, the le if there's a lesson from history that we, always one can look back on earlier e eras and feel that way. 
Yes. Well, I mean, you know, at the end of the uh, you know, 19th century, there's a famous statement in physics that I'm sure you're familiar with. Lord Kelvin is usually credited with saying it. It's unclear that he actually did that, you know, all the laws of physics were worked out except, you know, this or that constant of nature that needed to be evaluated to the sixth or seventh decimal place. And of course, that was before the discovery of special relativity, general relativity, quantum mechanics. So it's spectacularly wrong. It's spectacularly short-sighted. Yes, yes. Um, but um, do you think it's possible that there is a discovery, a, a phase, a step on par, say, with quantum mechanics, which, you know, for physicists is the revered step in our understanding of the natural world that we're completely missing right now. Yes, a different kind of precautionary principle. You've got to be precautionary about what you say and not fall into the Lord Kelvin um, error. Right. Um, I think it was Lord Kelvin also said, um, radio will turn out to be a hoax. Um, um, and um, what else did he say? Um, I well, don't know if I know that one. Uh, he said, um, uh, heavier than air flight is impossible. Um, uh, Jeez, you're really taking my hero and just cutting the legs out of it. Well, no, he was a great physicist for his time. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> he, he, also, um, he also gave Darwin some grief because... Wow, he, I opened a can of worms here. This yeah. is fantastic. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> he gave Darwin some grief because he calculated that uh, the sun was too young ah, to sure. have allowed time for evolution. And that's because he thought the sun was a fire. Burning, burning fuel, um, and had no way of, of knowing the sun is a nuclear reactor, and and so um, Darwin was in, intimidated because physics was the was the senior science, and so it, in a way, Kelvin kind of came a bit heavy on Darwin and 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 said, well, physics proves evolution not possible. What Darwin should have said, well, the evidence for evolution is overwhelming, so your physics must be wrong. <laughs> 